Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're on a road trip. We're just passing Button Willow out there. <laughs> Sad face. I made my buddy's Tacoma, he let me borrow it. I'm going to pick up the motor for my car. So, uh, yep. Hopefully it goes okay. We're going to San Jose. It's about a four and a half hour drive. Got about an hour down, about three and a half to go. Left very early. Uh, anyways, we're on a little road trip. Check back out a little bit. This truck has a wheel bearing going out, so that's super comforting. But uh, yeah, hopefully we make it. All right, so we're getting close, about uh, half an hour out or so. You know, it's a shame this state is run by idiots because it's a beautiful place. The uh, upper portion of Central California is very beautiful. Anywho, we're on the road, almost there. Wheel bearing hasn't uh, seized yet, so we're good. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is. Honestly, I'm not sure because sometimes uh, acoustics play tricks on you. But uh, sounds like it's the right front. I'm going to check the uh, temperature of the wheel hubs when I get this thing stopped, but getting there, almost there, got a little less than a quarter of a tank, this thing does not get good gas mileage, so, anywho, we'll be there soon, and uh, hopefully we can take some video of the guy's shop, see the car that the motor came out of and all that stuff, so, anywho, getting there. So at the shop, they got some pretty cool cars here. This is the car the motor came out of. It's pretty sweet. Been sitting here for a while. Oh boy. All right, so we have the motor. It's back there, just got loaded up, just left the shop. So, uh, headed home, and the fun begins. So, we're on the way back. It's a section of highway that crosses over the hills between the San Joaquin Valley and the West Coast. It's really pretty back here. It's pretty awesome. I'll probably stop and take some more video. Uh, there's a cool reservoir. Uh, the San Luis Reservoir coming up pretty soon. So. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, wheel bearing. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> uh, you'll hear in a second when I stop turning left. Yep. It's pretty noisy. Anyways, it's real pretty out here. Just thought I'd show a couple little video clips of some of the scenery on my drive. Motors in the back of the truck. So, yay. Wouldn't mind bringing my car out here. One day, maybe go to some track days and some of the northern tracks. There's Button Willow. Everyone's out there having a good old time. And I got a motor in the back of a truck. <sighs> Alright, so we got the motor home. One piece, truck survived, and uh, motor worked out pretty good back here with the tires. Worked out nice. So, we're going to get this thing unstrapped, get the uh, engine lift over here, and pick this thing up and throw it on the engine stand. Start tearing all this uh, stuff off of it. Okay, so I found something interesting. I'm not sure what this is, but it's like moisture. It's like water and oil or something. And there's moisture on the cams. There's like this weird. I have no idea. I've never seen this, but there's definitely water in here which is not super comforting. Uh, did this motor sit outside or something? 
had a lot of corrosion on it and this is really weird it's like they put the motor outside and it got was sitting outside in the rain or something i don't know man very strange other than that looks okay but i don't know there's water dripping down and everything it's weird i don't know do you know if it sat outside or just curious okay so i just got the front cover off valve covers off uh disclaimer this is exactly how it looked when i took it apart the only thing is i cleaned up all the uh well i haven't fully cleaned it up but i kind of wiped off all the mate surfaces because it had some buildup on the outside but uh the inside i have not touched this is all the way this looked when i pulled the cover off i mean that oil pump looks brand new literally crazy i don't know that's about i guess it's in the middle of its stroke or something but nuts so this guy uh, the guy that got the motor from used royal purple and people talk crap about royal purple but uh geez i don't know <laughs> if anything it's incredibly clean oil i mean there's no discoloration on the metal there's it's crazy so anyways, uh, he ran water with water wetter. That's why there's some discoloration in the water passage. Usually it's a vibrant machine look, kind of like this. But uh, yeah, interesting. So I guess I'm going to pull the plugs. He doesn't know if this is the newer style plug or the older. So uh, I guess we're going to find out real quick here. I need to be able to turn the motor over easily so I can get it to the right spot for timing it. So I guess I got to pull the plugs. Wish me luck. Look how clean these valves are. It's insane. Crazy. I got some crap on there. Some blowing air and stuff, but. Whew. Okay, so I got the cams off, or this side's cam off. Focus. As you can see, the journals look pretty dang good. There's a little bit of scoring, like. This one's got a little bit of a score on it right there. This one has a small one. You can't feel it with your finger, but you can see it. Not terrible though. The ones that came off my other heads were definitely worse. Since these aren't actually bearing surfaces, it's kind of like... Get what you get. You can't really fix it. So, this one looks alright. Not bad. It's getting ready to uh, put some assembly lube on these and drop the hot rods in. So I probably am going to replace... So, full, full disclosure, no one has these in stock right now. So I'm thinking, well, these only have 50,000 miles. They should be fine for at least a little bit. Before I go to the track, I'm going to change these out. Um, I'm not going until the end of the summer, probably, or next fall, or this coming fall. So anyways... These are probably fine, but I'm going to replace, there's a couple that have marks on them. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and take them all off and feel the bearings, make sure they're smooth. If I feel anything weird, I'll replace them with one of the ones that I had before. Um, but yeah, so I'm not too concerned about it, honestly, but, uh, yeah. So we're ready to put the first cam in and, uh, yeah, I'm still pretty shocked that I put my cams in 180 degrees out on my last motor. It really sucks, but it explains a whole lot. All right, so I have the uh, the cams in. Everything's got uh, assembly lube on it. I just installed the high volume oil pump. This is a Melling M340 HV pump. New O-ring in there. I need to torque everything still, but uh, once I torque that, I'm going to start putting the guides in and tensioners and all that good stuff. So the tensioners uh, looked fine. The seals weren't broken or anything, so... I literally could have just left everything on this motor. It would have been fine, but I wanted to do the pump, and I already bought everything. You never know until you get to this point. So, anywho, we're going to keep going and start putting stuff on the motor. All right, so here we are, much later in the day, not nearly as far as I want to be. It's like 9.30 at night. I got home around 2.30, so I'm seven hours into it at this point. But the engine's clean. Uh, the cams are in. Had to redo a couple things. 
I had a uh, follower slip out that I didn't notice when I was putting the one cam in. And anyways, so everything's torqued. Everything's ready to go. I got the, uh, the uh, seal surface all cleaned up, and I got it to put silicone over the head seams where the front cover mates up with the block and the heads. So you put a little silicone on there and the bottom corners here where it meets the pan. Put silicone there just like you would put silicone on these two spots when you put your valve covers on. And I'm ready to put the front cover on it. I got the front cover. This is actually my old one because it was cleaner than the other one and I didn't feel like cleaning the other one. So I got the new seal, new crank seal on there. New uh, seals around it and uh, getting ready to bolt that on right now. Then I'll flip it over, put the pan on it, and then the water pump, the pulleys, temporarily put the valve covers on it, and then uh, start port matching my heads. So I've already kind of marked them out a little bit where I need to open them up. It's actually a pretty substantial amount. So, and the reason I had to do that was when I had my other heads, I ported. They were quite a bit larger, and I noticed that on the Ford Racing intake manifold, um, it's made to fit a stock head port. So the opening is actually quite a bit smaller than this, but it had like a like a little ramp right here. Like if I were to have my finger be the shape of the ramp. So it actually had a little ramp to take up some of the room to make it a smaller port. So now it's a straight flow and the sides too, kind of the same thing. So... I opened everything up, poured it down the uh, the fairings for the injectors, stuff like that. So since I opened this up to match my heads that I poured it before, now I have to open up these heads to match this intake. Otherwise, I basically might as well not even use this intake because if you run uh, an intake manifold with larger ports than the head ports, what happens is the air coming down through the intake manifold gets to the head and the head opening is smaller and so it causes a bunch of turbulence and power loss and pretty much doesn't do anything for you so i basically have to open up the heads which sucks i, I really don't feel like it but i'm committed at this point so i gotta do it so anyways gotta get that going um i need to clean this out still i got a bunch of metal shrapnel you like can see a couple of chunks in this port right here this is the one that popped a hole in a piston so you can kind of see where I ground out some of the port, cleaned it up a little bit. There is not very nice casting in this thing, so anywho, I have to clean this out tomorrow outside with the hose, and I got to take the throttle body off of it. And it's going to be a mess. It always is. There's, I'm sure there's all kinds of crap in there from the piston taking a dump. So anywho, motor's all cleaned up. It's looking pretty good. Just got to get the front cover on it, get the pan on it, and do all the pulleys and stuff, and then get the port matching these heads. And then once I get that done, I think I can put the manifold on it and be ready to pull it off the stand and start bolting the flywheel and clutch to it and all that stuff. So I'm way behind. I was hoping to have the transmission on tonight, but that is not going to happen. So we'll see how far we get tomorrow. And uh, I don't know if I'll do two videos or just one big one. So not like it really matters, but... Anyways, that's it for now. So ready for the pan and the new gasket. So your new uh, melting oil pump, chain, all the goodies in there. It's kind of hard to see in here, but this overall looks pretty clean. Pretty awesome. Can't see a whole lot, but. What I can see looks good. So, anywho, toss the pan on this thing and flip it back over. All right, so I've port matched the first set of runners. Uh, basically what you do is you turn the motor until the valves close. And three of these and three of those were closed at the same time, so I did all of those at once. Covered up everything with tape. I uncovered these now, but all the holes into the motor are covered up, plugs are in it. Um, so those are a little comparison between the stock port and the open up port to match the intake manifold. So it's nothing fancy, it looks rough. It's because intake ports shouldn't be polished. So 
Anywho, we're going to do these last two and then uh, clean up a little bit and start putting the rest of the stuff on the motor and pull it off the stand. All right, so the basic long block is all together. I got uh, all the intake ports port matched to the intake manifold. And uh, yeah, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to put the headers on right now. Hopefully, I can still put the transmission on with the headers on it. So, anywho. Let's get the rest of the crap bolted on this thing and we can start working on the drivetrain portion of it. Okay, so this is where we're at. I skipped a lot. <laughs> My dad came over and uh, helped me put the clutch on and the flywheel. Um, then uh, I got the trans mounted up to the engine, which is about 300 times easier than doing it while it's in the car. And my son and I actually dropped the motor in. Wasn't too bad. Took 15, 20 minutes to get it all situated in, in here but it's in got the drive shaft hooked up all the mounts are tight power steering's on ac pumps on so uh now i need to go and start running all the uh wire harnesses to the correct spots get the coolant stuff hooked up then it'll be uh once the wires and stuff are in i can put the x pipe back on finish the, the shifter install inside the car intake manifold intake and all the radiator stuff um i'm going to prime the oil system with a pressurized pot from home depot i found a video online uh, from modular head shop talks and shows you how to essentially prime the motor with oil before you start it so i'll do that before i start it but it's getting late and uh i probably won't start the car tonight which is unfortunate because it's hanging out the garage halfway so i'm going to push it in but I'll probably be able to, I'm probably going to finish it all tonight and then uh, we'll finish off the rest in the morning as far as like loading the tune and priming the oil and all that stuff. So hopefully uh, that goes well, but uh, yeah, we're going to keep cracking away at this thing, making progress. And uh, now it's just all the little stuff. So yep, that's where we're at. steps in the video but running pretty good I'm amazed at how smooth it is in the car with the uh, polyurethane motor mounts super smooth got a little bit of an exhaust leak on the driver's side but not bad no leaks I had to undo my oil cooler because uh, the motor is in a little bit different position and there's not enough room to uh, get the oil filter between the sway bar and the filter mount so anywho then get the hood on it and do a little more driving and see how it goes from here but so far it's good 